What you are watching is paranormal activity that was recorded by accident in 2016. This is the end of a woman's arm wrestling tournament. Look closely at the woman in the middle. Her name is Tatiana Faria. She's an impressive athlete and one of the best female arm wrestlers in the world. Look closely at her eyes. Did you see what just happened? We will slow down the clip and zoom in close. Her eyes instantly become black. Also look at the area around her left eye. It becomes pale and gray as if something is manifesting through her. There is no physical explanation for what you just saw. I don't know of any magic trick that allows someone to instantly change the color of their eyes. We see no sudden movements to suggest this is a trick. What's even more amazing is this is one of many signs that were caught on camera over a period of several years. These videos have been online for many years, but the paranormal activity in them has remained unseen. This documentary will reveal and analyze the supernatural activity that was captured in these videos. The year is 2018 and the event is WAL 405 in Los Angeles. The WAL features some of the best male and female arm wrestlers in the world. What you see here is original video from the event. Tatiana has been introduced for her match against Erica Bankson. She is walking out into the audience. Watch closely at what's about to happen. Her eye will instantly turn black, similar to what happened in 2016. Now watch something else that's extraordinary. There's going to be a dark black shape that appears across her wrist and forearm. Watch as we zoom in and slow down the original footage. We see a black object emerge from the shadow of her wrist and forearm. If we look closely, we see this is not a natural shadow, but a sharp black shape that's exposed in the light. There's no natural explanation for what we see here. It's different from any known illusion or trick. If it's an illusion, then it's a very unusual one. What you have seen here is original. I have carefully taken clips from existing videos to show the supernatural activity in them. At this time, all these videos are available and I am providing the location or address of them. If you are a paranormal investigator, a skeptic, a believer, or a spiritual person, I am providing the information so you can view the footage to form your own conclusions. If you look closely at the right time, you will see the paranormal activity that I am alleging is in the original video. We are moving forward to 2019. This is WAL 505 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Here Tatiana is matched against Victoria Carlson. What I found more revealing than the official WAL video is a video from Tatiana's corner. This is the source of the video you are about to see. I believe this man is a friend who's recording her up close with her own cell phone. This is her own video. We are going to see her eyes change color again, but in a much more pronounced way. It's helpful if you turn down your lights to better see the activity. 
She hasn't arm wrestled yet and she's chalking her hand in preparation for the match. As she stands up, she looks stunned as if she can't see good. Her eyes have become dark and cloudy. Then we see an opaque substance in her eyes that flows out. I've dedicated many years to studying the supernatural. I am a believer, but also a skeptic. There is a lot of fraud in the world of spirituality. False claims are made all the time, but this doesn't mean they're all false. My goal is to separate what's true from what's untrue. When I first discovered this, I asked myself as a skeptical person, is this real? Is it possible that a professional athlete was possessed and could this possession have been accidentally captured on video? I felt as though I had discovered a breakthrough in paranormal research, but I had questions. What if the activity isn't genuine? Could someone have added small effects to these videos to make her look possessed? It seemed unlikely, but possible. These questions led me to deepen my investigation. Before I could go further, I needed a way to verify the footage. I needed to corroborate the WAL videos by finding a source of video that's completely independent. If the same paranormal activity is found in a completely independent source, then this suggests that the WAL videos are genuine. This led me to the Brazilian interview. Tatiana Faria has been called the Pride of Brazil. In 2018, she was interviewed on a popular Brazilian talk show called The Noite with Danilo Gentili. She appeared with another arm wrestler named Paulo Morbio. Together they talked about their sport and later they demonstrated their arm wrestling strength. What's special about The Noite is that it has no connection to the American WAL. The Noi is produced in a studio in Sao Paulo, Brazil. It's a completely independent venue on a different continent. The footage you are about to see is original. It has been seen by millions of people. However, up to this point, no one has discovered the paranormal activity in it. Here we are looking at the demonstration part of the interview. Tatiana is standing near the table. If we stop here, we see something isn't right. Take a moment and look at this frame. There is a line along the side of her face. It looks like a shadow, but if we look closely, we see that it isn't a normal shadow because it flows out from her eye. The video switches to a different camera. Now watch as the next camera captures something unusual on her left side. We see a black fluid form around her eye and become a line that goes down her cheek. If you look closely, you can see that this isn't a strand of hair because the black line comes out from her eye. Notice the similarity to the 2019 footage. In both cases, we see an opaque substance that appears to flow out. The video then switches to a different camera for a few seconds. Now we can see a close-up of her eye and the dark line is apparent. It looks like a tiger stripe. As she moves, the line will expand out into a vapor and her eye becomes darker. When the camera moves back, we see the line has disappeared, but the left side of her face has changed. Her eye is very dark and the area around it has a gray color. As with the other videos, 
These changes only last for a short time. The Brazilian interview was a breakthrough in my investigation. I had found an independent video showing paranormal activity that's exactly like the other videos. The Gentili footage was a second witness in my investigation. As with many things that are paranormal, we need to interpret what we're seeing. What is this dark fluid we see in both the 2019 cell phone video and the Gentili interview? This is called ectoplasm. Yes, ectoplasm was fictionalized by an 80s movie, but it has a much deeper story to it. Years ago, it was believed that mediums have a fluid-like substance that comes out of their bodies. This strange substance could be seen by people and captured in photographs. From about 1850 to the 1920s, there was a renewed interest in certain occult practices. People would hire psychic mediums and hold seances. Together they would seek to communicate with the dead. This was the age of spiritualism. There was pushback against this movement on two fronts. The first was traditional religion, which sees these things as unholy. The second was from the skeptical world of science. Many skeptics, such as Harry Houdini, sought to discredit the spiritualist movement. They believed that all the claims could be explained as illusions or tricks, and they debunked many of them. If some supernatural claims are fraudulent, then in the minds of the skeptics, they must all be fraudulent. The spiritualist movement was divisive, but there were some who sought to investigate these claims in an open-minded way. This led to early types of paranormal research. One of these early researchers was the esteemed French physiologist, Charles Richet. Around 1894, Charles Richet used the term ectoplasm to describe the fluid-like substance that was observed coming from the bodies of mediums. Observations of these strange phenomena led to the use of the terms ectoplasm and teleplasm to describe them. The word ectoplasm came with the birth of paranormal investigation. I've learned that the world of the paranormal can be very alien to our way of thinking. Often people react to the strangeness of a claim more than the evidence. However, the phenomena make sense in their own way. Ectoplasm is a strange claim that doesn't receive much attention anymore. Perhaps it's too bizarre for some. However, if it's been captured on video, then we have a paranormal breakthrough. Ectoplasm in the eyes was captured several times on the cell phone video in 2019. At this time, she turns towards the camera and we can see something unusual in her left eye. We can see that there is a black substance around her eye that appears to drip down. The pupil enlarges and her eye changes shape. This is the release of ectoplasm into the eye. Then we look closely at her lower eyelid. We see that it's swollen and appears like a scale under her eye. Her eyelid is enlarged and almost covers her eye. What's even more interesting is what happens next. In a fraction of a second, the changes disappear. Any changes that are in the video have vanished. Among spiritualists, it was believed that ectoplasm was part of the body's response to possession. It was often present when a spirit entered a medium and took control. The spirit created changes to the medium's body and ectoplasm was one of the visible changes. There are many other changes that are known to occur with possession. There can be changes in facial expression, 
posture and skin color. However, it's often changes to the eyes that are the most obvious. As ectoplasm is released through the eyes, they can change shape, color, or become completely dark. Having seen what was captured on the cell phone video, I would like to look at something incredible in the Brazilian Chantilly video. What you are about to see is a breakthrough in paranormal research and viewer discretion is advised. Here she is next to the arm wrestling table during the demonstration. She raises her hands. In these frames, we can clearly see the whites of her eyes. Now as she closes her eyes, a transformation begins. When her eyes open, they have changed color. The white part of her left eye is now dark red. Her right eye has also changed and there is only a small patch of white that remains. This change is very similar to the 2016 video. We begin to see ectoplasm form and the pupils of both eyes thicken, becoming opaque in the light. Next, she starts to turn her head and we can follow her motion. We see in these frames that her left eye looks injured and very swollen. Now let's stop here and look. We can see her eye is completely different from how it was a few seconds ago. This is very similar to the cell phone video in 2019. Her left eye appears to close up Now as she stops moving, we get a good look into both eyes. They are opaque and dark in color, but they still capture light. We can see an intense expression on her face. Now the video switches cameras and the next time we see her, she is returning back to normal. The severe swelling has gone away and the normal color is returning to her eyes. What's so shocking is the speed that these changes occur. Her eyes change color, shape, and then go back to normal in fractions of a second. When we add together the different elements of this footage, such as her body language, her expression, and the rapid changes to her appearance, it's obvious that this is a paranormal event. We see a deep black color in her eyes that looks thick and opaque and this changes in sync with her movements. Recreating something like this under these conditions is, in my opinion, impossible. I don't believe we are seeing a clever illusion or a hoax. What you saw in the previous clip is known as a paroxysm. A demonic paroxysm is a loss of composure caused by the manifesting of the entity. As it bubbles to the surface, it creates changes in the person. There is a visible reaction because two spirits are trying to control the same body. There is discord between the soul of the person and the unclean spirit. Why does the entity manifest? There are several reasons. But either it decides to or it's forced to. Perhaps it feels as though it should be the one in control of the vessel of the person at a certain time, or perhaps something triggers it, such as an uncomfortable situation. A paroxysm is often an unwanted outcome for the entity. In some instances, it's forced to the surface even though it doesn't want to be seen. The Bible describes many paroxysms caused by unclean spirits being forced to manifest. Some of these are intense and cause convulsions. What's being described in this passage is an intense paroxysm. In the crowded synagogue, the unclean spirit cries out because it's forced to the surface. It's smoked out by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when it reveals itself, Jesus casts it out. Over the years, skeptics have argued that the disciples 
misunderstood natural illnesses as demonic possession. Some diseases like epilepsy can cause paroxysms and convulsions. So the skeptics believe that the paroxysms described in the Bible were caused by these kinds of illnesses. The foundation of their opinion is not from studying the Bible, but their own assumptions. In their minds, evil spirits are nonsense. Therefore, whatever the disciples witnessed was something else. If they describe evil spirits causing paroxysms, such as in Mark 1, this must be a misunderstanding. Paroxysms are, of course, not always caused by possession. In fact, they are quite ordinary and many things can cause them. Even simple things like being nervous. Paroxysms don't equal possession, but they are known to be a sign of it. What's unique in these video clips is that we see physical changes that defy explanation. This should cause even a hardened skeptic to consider what they're looking at. True possession is a supernatural occurrence. People having experience with it are often baffled by the strange phenomena they witness. They run out of natural explanations for what they are experiencing. Is what we have seen so far a coincidence? We have the same phenomena being captured at different times by different cameras on different continents. Her eyes change color and there is ectoplasm present. Then there are physical changes such as swelling. What's most unusual is the speed that these changes happen, literally in under a second. Can the human body change this fast? If this is an illusion, then how does she do it? Her hands don't go near her face or eyes when the changes occur. The Brazilian footage was done in a professional studio with multiple cameras. We can zoom in and see the moment that the changes are taking place. Spirit possession was a common practice in ancient religion. It was widely viewed as a way that our world can communicate with the unseen spiritual world. The body of the medium was used as a vessel for the spirits to speak through. Voodoo is an example of traditional spirit possession. The body of the voodoo priest is used as a vessel for communication with loas or divine beings. The possession induces a trance-like state in which the person gives messages. Voodoo is typical of many ancient practices that seek intervention from the spirit world through trance-like states. In Voodoo, there are different kinds of spirits that are recognized, some that are more benevolent and some that are more destructive. However, spirits can also be more benevolent or destructive depending on the circumstances. Satisfied spirits can bless the living, but angry spirits can cause such things as madness, illness, and death. Much of the religious practice is intended to bridge the gap between our world and the unseen spiritual world. In particular, the priests try to petition and appease the spirits for their own purposes. They try to harness the supernatural forces for their own benefit. It should be recognized that these traditions see invisible spirits as real. They don't see them as symbols or metaphors. They're not symbols of inner trauma or metaphors for empowerment. They're sentient beings that exist on another plane of reality. Most spirit traditions believe in very malicious and deceptive beings, what we think of as true demons from hell. These beings are the most negative part of the spiritual world, and possession by them is closer to what we might see in a horror movie. In Indian folklore, there is the Rakshasa. Rakshasas are described as ghoulish creatures with fangs, red eyes, and long claws. They're believed to have supernatural powers such as shape-shifting, creating illusions, and the ability to fly. They're found near 
graveyards at night. They're thought to be able to possess people in a most abusive way. In South America, there is the legend of the Anchamayan. The Anchamayan are thought to transform into spheres of light described as fireballs. They're also thought to mimic the sound and appearance of dead children. It's believed that Kalkus or sorcerers can make evil packs with them. The Choctaw Native Americans believe in a shadow being called the Nalusa Chito. This entity comes in the night and is said to feed upon a person's soul, saying its name is taboo because it can open a door for it. The Bible teaches that malevolent beings called demons exist, but it doesn't explicitly say where they come from. This creates a void that is filled with theories and interpretations. It's often thought they were once angels that became corrupt but maintained some of their angelic abilities. A simple answer is that any unholy or unclean spirit that can possess the living is a demon. The Bible, along with many other sources, describes demons as being deceptive. They're not required to tell the truth or present themselves in their true form. A demon could appear as a nature spirit or as your dead pet. People who deal with unclean spirits, whether as priests or paranormal investigators or mystics, are left to their own judgment. One person's demon is another's ghost, another's spirit guide, another's gray alien, and another's imagination. This uncertainty creates skepticism. Because of their supernatural nature, unclean spirits have had a powerful influence on religion and spirituality. They are known to have the ability to fetch information that would be impossible to know. This can be frightening, but for some it's a revelation. Often the assumption is that anything supernatural is sacred and a source of enlightenment. So when something is revealed by supernatural power, it's a divine experience, a true theophany. The Bible confirms such activity in the book of Acts. It describes the apostles encountering a woman with a spirit of divination. She was valued for the apparent power she had from the possessing spirit. Christianity itself isn't immune from demonic influence. The Bible says that there would be doctrines of demons that lead people away from the true faith. These are not blaspheming chants, but ideas that are enticing and self-indulgent. They are spiritual junk food that causes death. Ectoplasm contains the spiritual energy of the unclean spirit. It often comes from the eyes in a quick burst, and this was captured on video. We have a clip here from an interview that was done in Brazil around 2018 with EPTV. It's a promotional video for Tatiana's arm wrestling. Here she is talking into the microphone. She shakes her head, and we can see her right eye begin to darken as ectoplasm forms around it. This is very similar to what we saw in the Gentili interview. It's clearly not a shadow. In this frame, we see the ectoplasm release like a fluid. As we look at it from an angle, it creates a change to the shape of her eye. This strange effect is caused, caused by looking through the ectoplasm from the side. Then as she turns, we see a black line form across her nose. This is more evidence that the paranormal activity in the Gentili interview is genuine. I'm going to introduce video from a new independent source. This video is Brazilian and was posted online in 2014.
Here Tatiana is matched against her former teammate, Damaris Malaquias. We will see similar paranormal activity as before. Focus in on her left eye. At this time, it looks normal. Now as her head moves, her left eye becomes gray, blurry, and different from her right eye. We no longer see a distinct pupil. This is caused by the release of ectoplasm. Now in this frame, her eye has taken on an unusual shape. It looks black and swollen from the ectoplasm. This effect continues as her eye becomes a black mass against the white background and her cheek takes on a gray color. As with the other videos, I'm providing the address of the video so you can view it. Now let's compare the clip we just watched to one from the 2016 American WAL tournament. This clip is from Tatiana's match with bodybuilder Christy Resendez. Here we look at Tatiana's right eye. As with the previous video, we see a gradual change as she moves. Right here, as she passes through the window light, there is a gray cloud that forms around her eye. We can stop at this frame and see a clear picture of the ectoplasm. This frame may be one of the best images of ectoplasm ever captured. It looks like a dense puff of smoke that's released around her eye. We can look close and see the structure of the ectoplasm. This is not a camera blur because we can see clear details in the cloud. Now as she continues to move, the dark shape blurs with the background and we can no longer see it clearly. The camera loses the image, but we can still see some details. The area around her eye becomes gray. What's interesting about this comparison is that these videos are from different continents by different people with different cameras, years apart. Like the other examples, we have different sources showing the same paranormal activity. It's this corroboration of evidence over time that indicates the activity in the videos is genuine. We have completely independent sources showing us the same paranormal activity. Ectoplasm isn't something that most people think about but it has worked into popular culture. It's part of the demon face we see in movies and artwork. The eyes are sunken and black. The skin is pale and gray. The color of the eyes is inverted. People sometimes use makeup to create a demon face. They paint their face white with black shapes around their eyes. They make their skin pale and their eyes and mouth black. In low light, their eyes appear large and diamond shaped. Genuine possession is the inspiration behind these images. The black shapes are inspired by the outward flow of ectoplasm. Usually the demon face is more about entertainment than possession. It's done for theatrics and as a statement of rebellion against religion. Most of the people who dress up like this don't believe they're possessed, but there are exceptions. Real ectoplasm is different than makeup because it's vaporous and dynamic. There's nothing that can simulate the effects it has on someone's appearance. These effects are particularly noticeable under certain conditions. Sometimes if there's an object blocking the person, these changes can be seen better. In these few frames from the Gentili interview, we can see this unusual image as she goes behind the brim of a hat. The edge of her face appears pale white and gray with areas of extreme contrast. This intense contrast is created by the lines of ectoplasm that radiate outward from the eyes and mouth. 
In these frames, we see how powerful this effect can be. One of the strange effects of possession is that the entity replaces the person's normal spiritual energy with its own. Then the spiritual energy of the entity is released out through the person. This can create images such as we see here. These effects are more easily seen under certain conditions or by people who are sensitive to them. We look now at some new footage. This is the World Arm Wrestling Championship that took place in Hungary in 2017. This footage is not from Brazil or America, but is European and fully independent from the other videos. This clip is before the match starts. She briefly touches her nose. Then we start to see an unusual dark shape start around her eye and move out across the bridge of her nose. Here we can see a diamond shaped form within the shadow. The area around her eye takes on the same gray color we see in the other videos. We could see a significant difference between these frames. What's strange here is that nothing changes to create this unusual shadow. The lighting hasn't changed and the camera is in the same position. Yet we can see an obvious color change in the area around her eyes. A possession can create paranormal activity around the person. This is a segment from her 2019 cell phone video. Here she raises her head. The area around her left eye begins to come into focus and we can see it's enlarged with a hazy black color. There's also the appearance of a dripping tear shape in her eye as she moves. We can clearly see the ectoplasm come into focus in this frame, but there's more in this clip. There are two points of light that start near her head and then quickly move across the screen. I will zoom in on them separately. If these dots of light are reflections, then they are unusual. Their motion is not fluid, but jerky. They change from green to white at various times. We can also see that they have a distinct shape as they travel across her wrist. It's difficult to come to any conclusions except that the behavior of the two lights is interesting. Paranormal investigators often report unusual lights or light anomalies that happen with paranormal activity. Understanding the paranormal is about connections. When something is genuine, there will be connections between times and places that are waiting to be found. Here is more from the 2018 Gentili interview. Tatiana is standing near the table. At first, we don't notice anything unusual. But look at the stripe going down her cheek. We can see that it's not a shadow because it comes out from her eye. If we look close, we see that the shape flows out from this dark spot on the left side. As she opens her eye, we see swelling and the white of her eye is dark red. Like the cell phone video, these changes happen fast and seconds later, she appears normal. Here is similar footage from an earlier part of the interview when she is on the couch. Here we see rapid changes that are like the other videos. We see a deep shadow that looks like ink. Then as she moves, her eye instantly turns red. I have slowed this down, but the activity happens within less than a second.
When we compare this frame at the end with the earlier ones, it's clear that a sudden change has happened. Middle Eastern folklore is full of stories about the jinn. The earliest accounts of them are as demonic beings that haunted the caves and graveyards of the desert. Among their abilities were levitation, flying, and shape-shifting. The jinn were feared and the weary traveler was advised to be on guard. It's believed that jinn can enter and possess people. The symptoms of jinn possession mirror demonic possession. The jinn are believed to cause sleep disturbances such as nightmares, sleep paralysis, and sleepwalking. Other symptoms are seizures, hallucinations, and speaking in strange languages. The jinn are part of the long history of sorcery and magic in the Middle East. The name jinn means concealed. The jinn were believed to exist, but in a spiritual reality that's separate and invisible from the normal world. It was believed that a jinni could tell fortunes similar to a familiar spirit. A jinni could also be used by a magician to bewitch someone. People sought protection in the form of amulets and rings they believed could repel it. The belief that jinn can levitate people is notable. There is a similar belief about demonic spirits. Demons are thought at certain times to have the power to levitate people and objects. In the Middle Ages, this was known as transvection. It was believed that people could be lifted up by demonic spirits, often at night while they slept. The idea that witches flew in the night is part of this belief. The levitation of the jinn is the root of inspiration for stories of magic carpets carrying people great distances. The legends of the jinn were tempting to some. Magicians believed they were a source of power that could be controlled. Rituals were used to summon them. The jinn were believed to appear to the magician during the smoke of the ritual. One ancient belief is that King Solomon had been given special powers over the jinn, and he used them to build the first temple. One of the jinn rebelled, and he imprisoned it in a bottle with a magic seal. This story is a forerunner to the later stories that became the familiar genie in the bottle. The modern genie is a sanitized and commercialized version of the occult history of the jinn. If anything, the story of a delightful genie wanting to be free from his captor is backwards. The genie was the one seeking control, and it would bring the magician into bondage by using his corruption against him. The lamp is prized because it holds the key to the genie, but it also releases destruction into the world. There is wisdom in the idea that our own destructive tendencies come from seeking power and control. The power of the jinn is in temptation and deceit. It presents itself as a granter of wishes or a source of enlightenment, but these are false promises. The jinn's deceit is the occult deceit, a temptation that leads to bondage. Recently in books and movies there has been a return to the dark roots of the jinn as demonic manipulators. The beliefs about Solomon controlling the jinn are obviously not in the Bible. There's no suggestion that he had special occult powers or that these were the source of his prosperity. The Bible says that after becoming king, God appears to Solomon in a dream and asks what he wants. Solomon replies, wisdom to serve your people. God promises to bless him for his humble response. When a person has the light of God in them, there will be a reaction to a demonic presence. They will feel it, see it, and have the authority to bring it to the surface. This will not be a cry for attention or a false diagnosis. Rather, it will be an unmasking that is a test of faith. The power of deliverance 
comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit by forgiveness of sin. The power to bind evil spirits is not by magical incantations or rings, but by humbling ourselves in repentance. This is a true binding of demonic powers. In a possession, the eyes are affected. They are the windows of the soul and indicators of the presence. They can suddenly change appearance, becoming inverted or cloudy. They can be out of sync with each other as if something else is in control. We go back now to WAL 405 in Los Angeles to see something truly extraordinary. The following comes from Tatiana's post-match interview. We see now the camera is up close and as she blinks her pupil changes shape. It goes from looking normal to forming a ring that gives the appearance of a double eye. Next we see it suddenly change back to normal in a fraction of a second. Now this isn't over because if we keep watching the same double eye forms again when she blinks. And again it goes back to normal. We have unexplained changes to her eye that reverse and repeat in fractions of a second. In researching this segment, I considered different explanations. The question is, can the human eye do this? Is this something that's physically possible given our understanding of the eye? This part of the eye is called the iris. It's a complicated muscle that controls the light entering the lens. My understanding is that the edge of the iris is attached. It should not be able to rapidly change color or shape from its edge. Yes, these changes can happen over time through natural processes, but the rapid changes we see in the video should not be occurring. Is there another explanation? Could this be an effect of the light? The lighting in the video is consistent. We don't see any sudden changes such as a light being shined onto her at the moment her eye changes. Maybe this is a clever illusion. But if we consider how illusions are performed, there's usually a fast movement, the familiar sleight of hand. In this video, there are no fast movements. Her hands aren't near her eyes. There's no possibility that she inserts something into her eye. If she is an illusionist, then she is at a level the world has not seen before. I don't believe we are seeing magic tricks. Demons are part of the unseen spiritual world. It's important that the truth of their existence is documented. But let's take a moment and put this into perspective. If you are struggling with mental illness, it's probably not demonic. If you are struggling with physical illness, it's probably not demonic. If you are struggling with an out-of-control child, it's probably not demonic. Most suicides are not demonic, and most homicides are not demonic. Most seizures are not demonic, and most paroxysms are not demonic. Most of the problems in the world are not directly caused by possession. There are probably more people who think they are possessed than actually are. However, if such things do exist, then we should know. Our beliefs should come from good information. We should make important decisions based on facts. If possession by unclean spirits is true, then that's very important. Maybe you haven't been to church in a while. Maybe you aren't sure what you believe. I will leave you with the following advice. You should use common sense with things that are spiritual. If something feels evil or dead, then don't play with it. If you have an encounter with something demonic, stand your ground and rebuke it. Label it as being unholy and deceptive. You should not trust it and you should never welcome it into your home or body.